Uh, generally, I do the same thing every freaking day. And it's awesome. I love it. Speaking of which... Timo Yama, this run. From 5 a.m. until 11 a.m., I do my personal training and then my training myself on the side, like road work and whatnot. And then from four until seven, I run and manage the gym. And then from seven to 8.30, I have my fight team training. And then after that, I go home, hang out with the family, uh, make some dinner, take out the trash, miscellaneous chores, kiss the baby, walk the dog, uh, try to go to bed, and then wake up and do it again, seven days a week. What is Timo Yama to me? It's, it's everything. Uh, some people don't have friends, some people don't have families outside of here. Where are their friends? Where are their family? Timo Yama, this run. You asking for help for training, he will hold me and do whatever. And he's always like trying to build up the gym and make sure everything is okay here. The management side to the team side is always trying to cheer people up, always trying to help people out. Very grateful to have that guy in, in my life and at the gym. Um, in high school, my senior year, I saw the ultimate fighter and something clicked. And I was like, I want to do that. I've been doing it literally ever since. Uh, of course, I fought, won a bunch, and then I lost against a super tough dude. I thought I could knock him out. And guess what? I didn't. Life overwhelms you sometimes. I think life kind of caught up to him too as far as like, you know, needing to make money, getting married, you know, he had to make some decisions. Um, I became the uh, general manager here at Timo Yama in Irvine, California. At the time, I was so overwhelmed with work that I was like, dude, I have no time to train. I have no time to fight. If I don't put my full focus into this gym, um, it's gonna shut down and a lot of jobs are gonna be lost and a lot of people are gonna lose a place that they call their second home. But I, I found purpose in life and I found that purpose was to help others through MMA and fitness. So um, I'm able to help people lose weight, gain confidence, you know, prep them for fights. So what we're gonna work on this next combo, I wanna see a jab, sidestep cross, um, so it's been amazing to not just help people in person, but help people around the world um, online. The biggest problem I see with other tutorials out there, it's so hard to understand because they're talking to the camera and there's background noise and all kinds of stuff, so sometimes I can't hear them. So I thought to myself, why don't I just voice over my tutorial? And, and so I started doing that, started getting a lot of traction, followers started going up, getting way more requests for tutorials, and now I do tutorials every day. Two tips for a better roundhouse. First, you want to swivel your hips like a door. Got to use hips. That is it. Hey, Rich, hey, what's cracking, brother? What are you doing? Yeah, working out. The packaging I like. The new packaging is pretty freaking dope. Um, are you able to get me a set? I haven't actually been able to see it in person. Of course. So Lace and Loop is a uh, a product that lets you lace up your own gloves. You get the benefits of the best feeling glove you can have out there, and you don't have to ask anybody to do it. The, the reason why we started it is we wanted to support other fighters. And so I get to take part in them fulfilling their roads to their dreams. Um, I got to train a little bit here and there. I had an opportunity to get back into fighting, and then I ruptured my ACL in a jiu-jitsu tournament out for a year. Um, I ended up getting cleared in nine months. Um, so three months early, super stoked. Awesome, back in a training camp. Tore two muscles in my shoulder, um, doing a pull-up. What the heck is going on? Is, is this not meant to be? Nah, I, I never doubted that at all. If I can't make it happen, that means I didn't want it enough. And if I just walk away and not even try, like what kind of example am I trying to set for my kid or the other people that look up to me and follow me? You know, so I have to do this. And after three years of inactivity, I'll be back in the ring, March 9th, CXF in Studio City. You know, I think for him to start, restart fighting at, at you know, early 30s, um, it's not going to be a problem. I think uh, his, his power punching style and stuff will be, he'll, he'll, he'll have a smooth transition back into professional fighting. Training camp has been awesome. The first week or two has been rough, getting out of breath, tired, uh, feeling super weak, uh, but my strength is going back up, my speed's going back up. I'm doing strength and conditioning now, uh, and I feel freaking fantastic. The personality that he has inside the cage is, is definitely different than the, the uh, the guy that's outside or the guy that's behind the desk or the guy that's you know teaching class. Mental part, I got it. I have no doubt in my mind. I want to put on a good show and I'm going to destroy. He does have the one thing that uh, you can't teach somebody. He has the ability to hit somebody really hard. When it's time to, to get the job done, he has no, no problems pulling the trigger. He'll bring some shots. It means so much for me to be able to come back and perform and fight. You know, how many people get to fulfill their dreams? I've been wanting to do this since I was a kid. And I'll be honest, my heart was a little broken when I felt like I wasn't able to do it anymore. But now that I'm back, like, holy crap, like, my smile is as big as ever.